done. It is go time. This is when we have to make all the magic happen right now. So uh, this is, this was, you got to bring your A game. Uh, no redos, no redos. So uh, why don't we first start off with, um, um, what'd you guys have for breakfast this morning? <laughs> I had coffee. That's my okay. breakfast. Just some breakfast coffee. Right. Same How about here. You, David? Same just, here. just coffee drinkers. That's it, huh? Just I coffee. Had all right. Apple, actually. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, um, as my listeners can kind of hear, we have two people on today. So why don't you guys uh, do, do us a favor so that we can uh, recognize your voices here. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves um, and then tell us kind of what you guys do for the company. Sure. Uh, my name is Sky. I'm one of the founders. Uh, I'm kind of spearheading a lot of the creative and marketing, a lot like, you know, a lot of things you see on the Kickstarter page mm -hmm. and a lot of the focus on product design. Um, so. And this is cool. David. My name's David. This guy's co-founder. Uh, you know, we're, we collaborate on everything, but I kind of uh, head up the operation side of things. So make, making things happen and, and pushing us forward uh, to get a great product into the market. Awesome. Awesome. And with that, then let's talk a little bit about actually what your product is for our listeners who haven't seen it or don't know what it is. So maybe when you guys can uh, take the ball there and, and talk about what it is that you're raising money for uh, on Kickstarter. Sure. So we created Hitch. Hitch is a reusable water bottle. It's a premium bottle, really nice bottle, full size. that has a, a hidden uh, cup that actually is, is inside it. You can take it out. And we created it uh, out of a personal need that we both had. Um, you know, reusable cups and bottles, when you have to carry both of those things around, it's just kind of frustrating, like, where they're going to go. My bag's are already full. They don't stack or connect. And, right. you know, uh, try to look at things that exist that do that. And they all kind of fall short there. They're leak or like, you know, the cups blocking the bottle from <laughs> drinking out of it or, and that, you know, doesn't fit in your bag, whatever. Right. So we just thought, well, there's a better way to kind of do this. So we came up with the design for hitch and kind of organically developed it and put it on Kickstarter. That's cool. That's cool. So for our listeners who maybe you know, haven't visually seen it yet, Talk a little bit about where is this cup? Kind of, how do you kind of tell somebody who who can't see it right now uh, where this cup <laughs> sure. is hidden? Yeah. So, so hidden, right? That's a funny word. So basically, if you were to look at the bottom of the water bottle, uh, there's actually a little handle down there, and you turn that handle, and the cup, you're actually turning the cup, and it comes out. And you'd say, well, then the bottle's kind of small, right? Well, <laughs> actually, the bottle goes all the way down to the bottom of internally there's like an inner bottle basically and the cup's almost sleeving around that bottom inner bottle protected from with a shell around the outside of the bottle uh, it's kind of like a nesting doll yeah and uh, and that and that allows you to have the cup accessible when you need it so if you go to the coffee shop see, there it is right. and one other thing i should mention that's important with this is you know you need to lid for your coffee that's one of the issues with like a thermos right like <laughs> it's great to sip out of like if you're sitting down but if you're walking around and doing stuff, you need like a lid. So there's a lid for the coffee cup that's hidden up as well on top of the bottle itself, on top of the wow. bottle lid. Yeah, for our listeners who haven't seen it yet, it's it's like um, it's like one of those designs when you look at it and you go, oh, that just makes sense, right? It's like, it's a, it's a, almost a no-brainer, like, you know, you don't have to like really think about it. You just got to go see it. So I, I definitely recommend going over to the Kickstarter right now and checking it out. But so you guys mentioned that this is something that uh, kind of spawned from what you guys n just needed, like you saw this need. So what was it that, that um, like after you kind of had that idea, like what started happening? How did this process start to happen to, to, to make, uh, to make hitch? David, you want to, you want to, sure. um, you know, I mean, yeah, Jeff, it's, it's great to hear you say that it, it seems like a, a no brainer solution because it's certainly a lot of hard work went to get to that point where it seemed like an obvious solution. Um, I mean, Sky had really the, the original kind of core insight about combining these two objects and started making like paper prototypes and sketches mm -hmm. were the first step. Um, and then really talking to a lot of people to see, you know, is this a problem you share? What, what kind of solution would you be interested in to this problem? And then just a continuous process of taking their input, combining with our ideas, pushing on it, going, oh, okay, this might work, but there's this problem and, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think the best comment I've seen come in so far was that, you know, I saw an ad for this and I thought it was too good to be true, but you guys thought of everything. I think that was really the work we were doing was thinking of everything. Like, like Sky said, you got to have a lid, uh, you know, there's all kinds of challenges, obviously. So um, just a continuous process of, of pushing on everything um, 
that's, you know, how we got to where we are essentially. Yeah. And, and what, you know, you mentioned like making prototypes out of paper and stuff. How, how long of a process are we talking about from that to, you know, some of the stuff I'm seeing on the Kickstarter page right now, how long of a process are we looking at? That was a year. Good um, solid year. A solid so, year. Yeah. It was really like we've been all in on this during that time, you know? Uh, right. Gotcha. And over that year, what would be the thing that was keeping you guys up at night? Like what, what was the, <laughs> the I don't know if we can do it, you know? Well, well, uh, that's, that's a good question. So, uh, I think the, the hardest thing that, that we kept running into that we kept worrying about was how, you know, can, will this fit into your life t today? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, all these other things you can think of just stacking them on top of each other, or whatever you keep running into the problem. Most people's bags, you know, day bag, messenger bag, they're only so tall. People have cup holders in their car. They're only so wide. You know, people want to carry like a fair amount of water and a fair amount of coffee. Okay. You've got all these pieces and you have these constraints and how do you make it work where, you know, it's actually going to fit. You're not going to buy this thing and say, Oh, it doesn't fit. Right. So that was the hardest thing to do is to continually press against those constraints and figure out how to move past them. Yeah. And, and how, how quickly did you guys get to a point where you felt like you had something? I, I mean, I can see making prototypes, but like at what point in that process did you go, okay, this is real. <laughs> this is like, like, you know, we're not nuts. You know, this is an actual real thing. Like, where are you at? Where is that in that timeline? I, I don't know. But David, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this too. I, I think when we started doing an early prototype testing with customers last year mm -hmm. and saw them go like, Oh, this is magic. Like I, ca I can't wait. I can't wait to walk into the coffee shop or whatever and just do that motion of taking the cup out. And suddenly like it just, it just getting that feedback from people was key in terms of like this design or the way that this actually works is the, is the right one came later. But I think the earliest sign was actually just, you know, showing it to people and getting a lot of early validation of people saying like, take my money. Like if you can make this work, I'm, I'm in, you know, <laughs> right, and then right. there was a lot of work between those two things sure, of sure. You know, the final design. But yeah. Yeah. How about you, David? Yeah, did, you have a, did you have a moment like that? I would agree. Definitely customers. Um, there's also a super experienced product designer on our team that we both respect a lot. And our, our first meeting with him when it was still very conceptual and we shared it with him, uh, and he also used that word magic. And I think that was big for both of us that like, we're onto something here. You know, this guy has the intuition and experience to know whether this is a dead end or not. And for, you know, to hear him say that, that was very encouraging. Um, and then, you know, launching the Kickstarter, to me, that's been huge just to see that like, yeah, it's not just people in our circle that think this, there's people who are complete strangers who mm -hmm. are really think this is an amazing solution to a problem they have in their life. That's been, um, you know, super encouraging, obviously. Right. So, you know, so now in that, you know, in that's this timeline here that we're working through, what, um, what starts the process to get, you know, like as close to a final version as possible for videos and photos and, and making this look good. Cause you, you talked about that there's still a lot of work that has to happen, even though people are, are into it. What, what starts that process in terms of, you know, getting something that's really, really close. Well, for video and photo, like, well, I, I think it, it really had to figure out the story, the narrative we wanted to, to tell. And, mm -hmm. and that took a long time because you have these different themes of the product design, uh, something that helps you and your and things that are more about convenience, um, the sort of story around, you know, zero waste. There's all these different things you could say right. and make a campaign about and sorting through those and figuring out what our main point was. We had that and putting that down on paper was the first step, right? And then we built yeah. everything off that. Uh, this the treatment for the video, the what kind of photos we were going to shoot of the product and the lifestyle photography, and all that came came from figuring that story out first. And yeah. and uh, and then fi figuring out the balance between. In this case, we had you know three main themes, which was like convenience, design, and sustainability. Mm -hmm. Figuring out how to tell that story. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, you know, one of the things I, I noticed, I think you guys did a really good job of, of weaving, weaving those three things together. Sometimes I'll see these campaigns where they're so focused on like saving the earth 
that their product gets lost. Like, oh yeah, we're going to save every single water bottle. You'll never, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, I get it, but I'm still going to open this water bottle at the sporting event or, you know, like it's going to, it's just a part of life. Right. So I think you guys did an excellent, excellent job. Was there internal conversation to discuss, um, not going too far into that sort of category at all and not saving the world? Um, you know, for for sure. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we also talked to a range of people in our circle and people that also, we did some surveys, uh, with some people that signed up for a pre-launch list. And it became pretty clear just from that input that some people are all about zero waste and other people are like, don't hit me over the head with that, actually. I, I right. just, I'm about functionality. Okay, so we have these different audiences. Mm-hmm. You create a great universal product. You just have to, you know, appeal to different things at the same time. So we had a lot of talk about that. We had different opinions from advisors and customers who felt really strongly it should be all about waste. They're all about, Mm -hmm. you know, forget that. Don't even mention it. So we had a lot of different opinions that we had to balance out. Yeah. And do you guys typically as a, uh, you know, in product design, are you guys putting, I think buyer personas are are important to kind of imagine who this customer is. Where is that sort of fitting in this timeline? Are you building something that you guys just want and then thinking about it? Or are you kind of creating that person in your mind of this product will fit this type of person? Uh you know, where does that sort of fit in it? The personas came really early because Mm. I don't know, I have a background in doing startups and you know, one thing you learn doing those is it's not really about you and you, what you think (laughs) is important or what's going to work. You have to understand who customers, your customer or customers are. So we did segments really early and primary customer segments and, and map that out. Now a water bottle and a coffee cup are seem pretty universal but then you start narrowing it down. Well, who's on the go? Who's maybe not in a car a lot? Who's on foot a lot? Who's in the coffee shop a lot? Who's design focused? For whom is the, the water bottle like a talking point piece? You know, and re- kind of came, came to the conclusion there were a, a few types of people that w- would really want this. And then many others that I think also would be interested. So we, yeah, we did that pretty early. Yeah. That's in, yeah, that's cool. Where does crowdfunding start to fit into this, um, you know, whole plan, right? Like, Hey, we should crowdfund this there, you know, or was it always from the beginning? Yeah, that's been, that's been baked into our thinking, um, from pretty early on, I would say for a few reasons. One, one thing that's been influential is a, another advisor of ours who's an engineer has been involved in some successful crowdfunding projects and, um, had a lot of good things to say about that model for, for standing up a business like this. And, you know, we both um, have interest in startups and, and business models and things like that. And, and once we started talking about it, there's really um, a lot of compelling things about launching a product like this on Kickstarter. Um, and as we've learned more, you know, it just turned out to be really a great go to market strategy in a way that much, much more sophisticated and meaningful way than I really understood when we started on this journey. Um, I have such a deeper appreciation for what Kickstarter is and and the vibrancy of the community. Um, And also just, I think it's an amazing forcing mechanism to make you, you know, like you got to really get your story to fit on one web page and and a lot of decisions are made for you, which can be frustrating, but can also be really great because You know, we had to come up with everything on that campaign page and that forced us to cut a lot of things. And um, I think what came through, you know, is a great representation of the product and and a great launching point for us. So, yeah, that's been baked into our thinking from pretty early on. Well, you know, because you had this team around you, which is not usual for a lot of startups, you know, that you have these advisors and stuff. What were some of the metrics that you guys were hoping to get from this campaign outside of money and backers and stuff? But like, what were there other things that you were like, hope, hey, we're hoping to see countries or, or just, I don't know, was there anything else that you were kind of hoping that this campaign would produce um, that may not be dollar amounts, you know? That's a good question. I, I, I think we, we're hoping to learn. So one way to answer that is, is we have this vision that's a little bit more around uh, we, we, this term we call conscious carry, which is that mm. we, we think there's a, a, a hunger for like a brand that has different products that are all easy to carry, you know, a clever, like compact, sustainably made that all kind of match, right? Like all yeah. your Apple stuff. Yeah. And we really felt that there was an interest in something like that. And hearing from customers on comments and direct messages and stuff, hey, when are you making the lunchbox? Like, <laughs> hey, like, can you make another size? I want both and I want to carry. And all these people get that there's like other 
that there's like a constellation of ED, everyday carry stuff that could mm. fit together. Getting unsolicited, like, hey, when's when are you going to do the rest of it? <laughs> is that 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 was like we were hoping we would you know discover interest yeah. in. Um, so that that that's that's one thing we were looking for. Like, is this have legs? And then the other is so many people we thought would want other sizes, mm. right? Because uh, you just look at water bottles and cups. There's not it's not one size fits all, right? And and so many people are like I bought it, but you know I want the bigger one or I want the smaller one, and we've been getting a lot of that. So mm. uh, we feel really excited to like develop other sizes and other products now. Yeah, that's that, that's very cool. So were there any sort of like um, metrics you were looking for before you hit that launch button? Was there anything that you were trying to like, listen, I know there's a math equation probably somewhere baked into here too, but were you like, we want to get X amount of emails, surveys, whatever it is. Was there something that you just wanted to really see that says, okay, we're, we're ready to launch this thing. I felt surveys was the surveys was a big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did, we did a survey with our pre-launch list and we wanted a statistically significant number of responses. Right. So we mm -hmm. could really see around a couple questions like, okay, do you carry a reusable bottle and cup today? Mm. You know, uh, it, if you do, what, why, what's the frustration you have? You know, getting some of those answers from people where we're in the 80% plus margin of people saying, I have this problem. Mm. I'm frustrated with this issue. Your solution is really appealing to me. I'd be willing to pay for it. I'd be willing to pay this much for it. Yeah, that was, that was the, that, I think that was the biggest thing, getting yeah. those sort of answers. You know, when you get pre-launch emails, you're like, oh, yeah, great. We may sell a lot more day one, but this is really like the thing for me. David, did you have anything that to, to build on that? Yeah, I think uh, certainly that. And then just in general, Jeff, having, you know, building a sizable and engaged pre-launch audience. We, mm -hmm. you know, every, every bit of research, everyone we talked to suggested that that's really critical for the success of, of a campaign and to get that, you know, initial campaign velocity. So we put a lot of time into that and that was um, really useful because then that's the audience we were able to engage with and, and survey them. And, you know, before you even have a product in Kickstarter, you've got people who are willing to talk to you about the product. And to me, that's just such a cool thing you can do, you know, with technology and to, to find these people who are willing to give their time to tell you what they think this thing should be, you know, and to engage yeah. in the conversation was super helpful. Yeah, that's cool. And so, I mean, we're, we're obviously talking a lot about the Kickstarter. Let's actually, talk some of these numbers, right? So while we're talking right now, you've got about 12 days to go. You had a goal of 10 grand and you guys have crushed that. You're sitting at uh, uh, three, I'm looking at 366,000 plus at the moment. But the number that sticks out to me is the amount of backers. I mean, over 4,600 backers. That's a lot of people. Um, so obviously this campaign is hugely successful. How did you guys come up with like a goal and some of the, the the metrics that you wanted to have on the page? Was there any strategy? Did you just kind of pick a number? And then also has this campaign just literally just, you know, it been a grand slam for you guys. Did you guys have any expectation it was going to be to this degree? Well, I mean, we figured like 10,000. Okay. That would be really validating for us to see if there was enough interest right away uh, to hit that number. And we could probably get moving with that. and. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it blew past it like really fast. <laughs> I'm sure. So, yeah. Okay, great. Like now what? And internally, I think we had hoped we could hit like 100K, that that would be good momentum. <laughs> Just we went past that. So uh, feeling really good about it. You know, I think I think it's uh, it's validating that see the average order value where it is. And people are, a lot of people are buying two. I don't know if you've seen the rewards, mm -hmm. but you can yeah. tell a lot of people buy two, which we didn't really expect, which is very exciting. Um, yeah. People want to buy them for their friends or their partner or whatever. So yeah, I, very, think, very cool. I think the, the numbers where there are, are really exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just the amount of traction. I mean, they're just getting, uh, that's a lot of early customers, a lot of people supporting the idea. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's why I, like, I'm, I always try to tell my, uh, my clients stuff. It's like, man, the amount of backers sometimes is more important. I mean, yes, the money, it's all, all great. I, we, we all mm -hmm. love the money, but like just that imagining that many people out in the world being at a party, talking about it, being at the, you know, having that, what is that? That's cool looking, <laughs> you know, like exactly. just, there's so much value in that that you just don't know and 
possibly for all those products that you're talking about down the road of like, you know, mm-hmm. so um, has there been a, and you might've just kind of mentioned this, but maybe is there been any other things that stood out behind the scenes in your dashboard where you're like, well, I was not expecting Iceland to, you know, support us or what, you know, uh, has there been just like weird things where you're like, did not expect that at all? I, one thing that's just been, you know, even better than we expected is how much traffic we're actually seeing from Kickstarter, you know, without, mm-hmm. without gaining the specifics, you know, we had some benchmarks of what to expect from other campaigns and, and advisors. And um, I think, I don't know if it's partially because there's fewer projects launching right now. We were really fortunate to get the projects we love banner very early on. Mm-hmm. And um, we've seen really a lot of traffic from Kickstarter. So that's, that's been huge. Um, we've been lucky to be featured in their newsletter and, and things mm-hmm. like that. So I think a little bit of the Kickstarter portion that's kind of a black box for a new creator. I mm-hmm. feel like we've just been fortunate with how some of those things come out. Um, and then, yeah, like you were saying, just the sheer number of backers. I mean, to have, I you know, we'll be over 5,000 before too long. And like, that's really very meaningful to know that there's that many people that, you know, are willing to give you, give you their hard earned money, particularly in this, you know, crazy time of uncertainty. I think obviously that was a big question mark for us is how does COVID affect everything? And um, people are really excited about the product and and what we're doing. And so that's just hugely encouraging. That's cool. Did, did, uh, did the COVID at all change your guys's plans at all was there i mean i got to imagine there was at least one conversation oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we, a day for yeah months yeah. We, 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 so we were planning on basically we had, in february we were like okay we're gonna launch in march right and we told our backers we're gonna launch in march and then march 10th or 11th when this really like <laughs> yeah again we we're like uh <laughs> wait a second <laughs> right so uh yeah it it, it was like a lot of you know all hands on deck what are we going to do feeling and i also got sick i don't know if i had covid but i was definitely under the weather for a while there's just this sense of like we got to probably put delay a little bit that was hard for us for our team for our own burn rate and all this other stuff Mm -hmm. so yeah it was challenging uh for sure for sure it was challenging and then we were able to kind of like look around and late in mid-april and say you know okay we talked to some other creators um on Kickstarter and saw that what other people were doing and felt a little better about launching. Yeah. That's cool. What, what do you think? I mean, over that, you know, the sort of the middle period, um, which, which for a lot of projects can be sort of a, tr- we call it the trough of despair here, right? Where like, it just slows down. It's not the first week. It's not the last week. Um, what have you guys been doing to sort of keep that momentum up? Keep, you know, just keep backers coming in. What, what's some of the things that you guys have been doing? Uh, we've been doing a lot of collabs. So we're doing uh, a lot of outreach to other campaigns. Mm -hmm. A lot of campaigns are reaching out to us. So we're just trying to cross promote as much as we can with campaigns that are products that are well designed or sustainable, or, you know, we just think resonate. Mm -hmm. Try to do that. Um, Just reaching out to different publications. Our friend Helen is on our team. She's just doing some PR. That's actually been really cool. Like we've gotten a lot of design and sustainability Mm -hmm sites that have been writing about us and giving us some good good backers from that um a little on social media email updates you know just trying to engage right. community things like that yeah that's cool that's cool and and how about like the for that like that last week of the of the campaign you know um are there any sort of things that you're thinking about doing to just make sure that that last week is as big as it can get i i think doing probably a little more like you know, maybe some Facebook ads and Instagram ads in a bigger way, just because they, from what we've heard, they can, they convert pretty well in that last week. Yeah. Uh, you know, really touching, touching base with our bigger pre-launch list. A lot of people who, you know, are like probably going to wait to the end, just letting them know, Hey, like <laughs> you're running out of time here. Right, and, yeah, right, right. You know, all those things to kind of get the excitement building again. Sure, this is the first sure. one we've done. So we're, this is yeah. all learning experience for That's us. Cool. too. That's cool. So, you know, after the 12 days and then the two weeks or so for the money to all drop and, you know, everybody's done all their high fives, what starts happening in your guys' process to fulfill these orders? What's starting to go on now? Well, I mean, that process is, is well underway already. Um, you know, we're really, it's really important to us to deliver a great product, you know, in, in a great time frame. And um, so, you know, advancing things with manufacturers, obviously this is a, you know, it's not a computer or something, but it's a relatively complicated product with, with a lot of custom moving parts. So um, the design is very advanced. Basically, you know, moving forward, the 
the uh, manufacturing of it and, and pushing forward to, you know, for something like this tool, you know, making the tools to actually make mm -hmm. the product is the kind of big milestone. So um, finalizing everything to get to that point and um, working out timelines and, and things like that. And so we're, we're deep in that. I, that's something I have a little bit of a background with. So I know, you know, your, your manufacturing partner is really critical to your success with something like this. Right. How is, uh, the COVID affecting that sort of world at all? Is there, is, is, is it kind of the same or is it challenging? What, what's happening in that space? I would say, you know, um, their large, well, our manufacturing partner is in China, which is where the, you know, pretty much all high quality double wall vessels are made right. um, in some really amazing factories over there that are really, you know, outstanding. Um, there are several, you know, in, in general, there are several months ahead of us on this whole, on this whole timeline. So in February, I was really concerned, you know, gosh, is our manufacturing partner going to be able to deliver and they're not in the office. And then, you know, end of February, they're like, oh yeah, hey, we're back. And now we're so impacted. So <laughs> right. um, as far as manufacturing capacity, they're really pretty much at normal. Um, they're all very agile team. Shipping, I think, is the biggest thing that's, um, yeah. you know, impacted and, and everyone from big brands to small brands are scrambling. That's actually another place where we're fortunate to have a, a team member who's super expert in that stuff and some of the, you know, kind of ninja moves you can, you can play to try and make sure you get a container reserve. So, um, you know, there's challenges, but it, you know, it's just, it's a challenging operating environment for all businesses, I think. Um, and there are not, uh, none of them are insurmountable for us, you know, and, and if anything, um, I'm a lot more optimistic than I was in February, you know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. you wonder is the whole global supply chain going to break down? I think we're all, <laughs> you know, people are resilient and we're finding ways to work through this yeah. time. Let, let's talk a little bit about shipping. Cause I think it's, it's something that can literally make or break some of these campaigns. And I personally, in my 10 years of doing this, I've killed a couple companies uh, cause of shipping. So, you know, it's in the past we learned about, we learned our lessons, but how are you guys approaching shipping on you know profit margins and just making sure that you can ship these out effectively and, and tariffs and just that whole, that whole potential animal. How are you guys handling shipping? Uh, we will in all likelihood be using a, a third party logistics provider. In my last job, I actually ran a warehouse for a manufacturer. We did in-house fulfillment. We did a really excellent job of it. Um, it's also hugely time consuming. I mean, to answer your question, it's something we've been modeling into our business from very early on. Yeah. I, I know that it's not one of those costs you can just ignore and go, Oh yeah, we'll get <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it out. It turns out yeah. to be a really significant dollar figure in the, in mm. a business like this. Um, so it's just something we've been thinking about meaningfully from early on. Um, and we, I, I have a pretty good sense of what the pitfalls are there. So we're, mm. we're, you know, avoiding them essentially. Nice. Nice. And, and let's, let's just talk about like, you know, what does this next year look like maybe for you guys as a company? Um, you know, I, ideally you're obviously shipping these out, you're working on them, but as a company, what's kind of happening for the next 12 months or so? Well, so we have to focus in the short term on getting this stuff out. At the same time, we want to start developing the second size. I think mm -hmm. bottles, you know, like this need a second size, a bigger brother soon. We don't want to wait mm -hmm. a year and a half or two years to put that yeah. out. That product development has to get started. Yeah. Uh, you know, new tools, new testing, all that. In addition to that, you know, we've had a fair amount of inbound and demand from, from uh, bigger brands and companies that want to like do a co-brand, like a, mm co-branded bottle with like a logo or something. So quite sure. a bit, um, like, like tech companies want to like give it to new employees, stuff like that, you know? Mm. And so we want to kind of stand that up that, and, and work through the best way to make that happen. We're really excited to do that. We also want to expand and grow our team. Mm. So, you know, bring on a great like customer fo customer focused person who can kind of think and own marketing in a deeper way. Um, and some, some other roles that we're, we're yeah. sketching out. So yeah, there's, there's a lot to do. Yeah. yeah. How about, how about f like five years? I mean, I know you guys talked about like, uh, you know, a potential <laughs> lot of pro like, you know, and it's hard to think five years from now. Um, but like, wh where do you guys see this entire company? I mean, is it multiple products? Is it more B2B that you're talking about? Just like, Hey, we license our stuff to these guys or, you know, like, what do you guys just kind of envision for five years on your roadmap? I mean, I just, we look at other companies, some of whom started on Kickstarter, uh, who are really big in like the reusable bottle space or, and they've grown from like a bottle to like, you know, every way that you consume liquids, you know, like <laughs> coffee and wine and beer and, you know, the backpack and, and there's a roadmap to like 
grow, you know, in your category you know, or in the category of everyday carry food and drink and a lot of, and to create a whole, like I talked about earlier, set of products for conscious carry. So we, we foresee doing that. You know, I, I think that people are going to be potentially carrying more food and more drink than they have in the past, making yeah. things at home and taking them with them. We just want to create a bunch of products that, that help you do that. Um, also, we've, there's a, we both have kids, young kids, and, uh, you know, moms, like, really want cool, like, stuff to carry that, you know, kids' food or kids' drinks in. Mm-hmm. So that's an area that's really interesting to us as well. Yeah. yeah. I could see that in my house. I got a couple of young ones <laughs> under under 10. So, uh, you know, it's all about, I don't carry that one anymore. Okay. I didn't yeah. know. I didn't know you don't like that <laughs> character or whatever I bought. I don't know. I'm <laughs> right. trying. Well, cool. Well, let's do a let's do a, a quick lightning round that has nothing to do with Kickstarters, uh, but has everything to do with us being locked away right now. So, um, if you guys are cool with it, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you some quick questions here. So, the first one is, uh, what are you guys watching on uh, maybe Netflix, Hulu, whatever? What are you guys watching on the streaming stuff? For? <laughs> uh, I'm watching Ozark. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, that, that one's good. Trying to watch uh, like stand up specials on on Netflix. Just trying to laugh too, because Ozark's yeah. kind of dark. Uh, yeah, Ozark. There's there's been many times at the end of Ozark where my wife and I had to put something else on. We were like, I don't know what I just watched, but man, that was intense. I got my anxieties all up, and yeah. I'm trying to go to sleep. So ratchets ratchets you up. Yeah, um, we're in the exact same boat. We uh, we just finished season three of Ozark, and then Black AF has been our new uh, palate cleanser for a little comedy. It's, it's really excellent. We just finished yeah. that last night, actually. That's cool. How about movies? You guys seen any movies lately? I mean, old movies, I feel like just uh, we're watching classic comedies because they, you know, just bring some, some levity to the room. Uh, yeah. Okay. How about you, David? Any, any movie lately? No, the uh, baby schedule, we haven't quite had a movie length block for, uh, for a while. Yeah. I only watch, when they, if I had that question, it's Scooby-Doo's, uh, Trolls. Uh, yeah. Troll yeah. movie, <laughs> Troll world. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Um, how about books? You guys reading anything right now? <laughs> to, to be honest, like not not really reading many books these days. I have uh, two ten month old daughters, Ooh. twins. So yeah, that's a that's a, uh, that's a zone two, defense you're playing right there. Yeah. Well, there's two on two, right? So we're, yeah, we're, <laughs> okay. And then, and then uh, you know, like basically between trying to start this, get this thing out, and dealing with two infants, uh, books have been you know cut down a little <laughs> move, bit. Move down priority list yeah. I, I want to start reading again but yeah it's been yeah. a while how about you david yeah. reading early in the scene i got inspired by a, a podcast and, and started uh war and peace because it seemed like a good time for that but then you know it's uh not too compatible with uh baby life and startup life so sure. i read like a page or two uh, at dinner occasionally but uh <laughs> yeah, books, are, books are tough right now yeah. Well, this might be the same answer then for this. How about podcasts? I mean, I know you listen to mine all the time and you've listened to every episode. 100%, 100% there. But if there was another one that you would listen to, is there anything else out there right now that, that uh, has caught your ear? Yeah. I mean, I, I really like, I'll, I'm just pulling up my podcast. Um, uh, I really like The Moment with Brian Koppelman. I really mm-hmm. like, you know, Bill Simmons stuff, Rewatchable. Oh, Bill Simmons. Yeah. Um, Conan podcast is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, food podcast stuff like that yeah yeah i i listen to a ton actually um there's one called nine percent invisible that's about design it's hosted by a guy named roman mars mm. uh i just really like his voice he's very soothing and it's not generally i listen to a lot of news stuff but right now i'm just not all about the news <laughs> yeah uh, on the media to me is if you do want something it's more meta about the news that's a really excellent podcast and I listen to a lot of finance stuff too that is either boring or, or not, depending on what you think. <laughs> nice. All right. My last one is how about um, any like entrepreneur blogs or things that you kind of go to consistently for maybe your business or, you know, just to kind of be inspired. Is there anything that you guys are kind of consistently going to? For me, it's, it's, it's definitely like Google searching different topics on medium. I follow a bunch of people who are mm-hmm. entrepreneurs and different like startup blogs and stuff like that. Also, though, we just have a good community where we live in, in Southern California, Entrepreneurs Network, like Startup Circle and, mm. you know, Venture Circle. So I just kind of reach out to those people and, you know, in the Facebook group with them yeah. and, uh, you know, just, just trying to learn as much as I can from people around me online. Sure. And especially online now because uh, <laughs> right. we're not, <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I, same for me. And then Twitter is a kind of a, a, a vice that I have that, you know, there's some negative stuff on there, but as far as startup culture and, and you know, innovation, you can learn a lot and there's a lot of positivity on there. So I would do cool. a lot of stuff on Twitter. Awesome. Well, where should people go if they want to learn more and kind of dive into your guys' world? So they can go to our Kickstarter page. The The easiest way to get there is just to go to carryhitch.com. So C-A-R-R-Y h-i-t-c-h.com that's our website there's okay. a big link big button you can't miss it to go to our kickstarter we're also on instagram posting a lot there that's carrie hitch at carrie hitch and also on facebook the same at carrie hitch so that's a good place to find us awesome awesome well i appreciate both you guys taking time out of your day i know uh it's busy time right now with the campaign uh, uh wrapping up in the next few weeks and uh i can't stress it enough i'm telling everybody go check this out great design great campaign you guys have literally hit a grand slam here and i'm excited to see what you guys come up with in the future and keep watching on my end so congrats on the campaign and uh keep kicking butt man appreciate it thanks, thanks jeff appreciate it